everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to over dye some yarn. Specifically, some yarn that I dyed before, but I'm not quite satisfied with the color coverage. It's not that there's anything particularly wrong with this. Yes, we do have like a bigger section of white, but we do have coverage and color throughout the whole skein. But I knew when I was dyeing this that I would want to add more color to it, and so I thought it would be fun to do an over dyeing video where the goal isn't to just cover completely what was there before. Instead, we will layer some colors on top of this. Uh, I'm not quite even quite sure what technique I'm gonna do, but the goal is not to kettle dye. We will over dye this probably with some dry dye powders, unless I change my mind in the next like hour uh, and see where we end up. But the main point that I'm hoping to make today is that your yarn is done when you decide it's done. If you finish yarn, you wash and dry it, if you're still not happy with it, you can always pre-soak it again and dye it again. There's nothing to stop you from that, and so that's what we're gonna do here today. The first thing that we will do is pre-soak this yarn, again, in some plain tap water. Now, clearly, you can over-dye yarn that is still wet. You don't have to dry it first, but there's no harm in letting it dry. Now I'm gonna grab more water. This yarn base is Knit Picks Swish DK, which is 100% superwash merino wool. And obviously I dyed this previously in another video where I was actually swatching some colors, which is why there is some patchiness to it. Now I could go and look up exactly the colors that I used on this originally, or I can go ahead and pick some colors that I think will complement the palette. It does not have to be the same thing. And you never know, you may end up with yarn from like a yarn subscription or something where it's just not quite what you wanna use and you wanna modify it. I'm now gonna let this yarn pre-soak in the plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. So the yarn can be well saturated before we start dyeing it. I have added the yarn to a catering steam pan and I'm gonna pour on Oh, let's do four tablespoons of white vinegar, and then we're gonna add enough water, and this is just even water from our pre-soak, to cover the yarn, but maybe a little bit more. I don't need it to be super low immersion, because I want whatever colors we add to spread, but spread a bit, not too much. We have something pretty going on here. It just needs like, a little bit more. So I think that what I'm gonna do now is turn on the heat and I'm gonna go get a couple different colors of acid dyes, put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and we're gonna start applying some color in here. But actually, you know what? I'm gonna turn off the heat because I don't want the heat right now. I wanna be able to touch this with my fingers and so I don't want it to be hot. I am the original dyer of this yarn. So I know, or at least mostly remember, what colors I had in here. But I'm coming in with some plum dandy. And my goal here is not exactly to go for speckles. My goal is to sprinkle the dye across so we don't end up with a clump. But then I'm gonna come in with my fingers and help work the color through a bit. I'm leaning in to the technique of swatching that I knew I had done before, but we're doing this in a way that is gonna be relatively soft uh, and just bringing in some cues that we see in here. Now, I do want to dry off my hands completely before I go get another color, though. Next up, I have some moss green, which, and you know what? These colorways are not going to be identical, and that is okay. It's going to be similar. I know that I've added things in some different regions, but they weren't the same to begin with. And we're just going to move it, move it through a little bit. And there might be some breaking and maybe not, but the goal is to have something that feels like it's sort of been here all along a little bit, but still a little bit random. I'm trying intentionally to not use colors that I knew were in here 
because I know what was in here. I don't think, though, that there was any teal green. So this one is some teal green now. And I believe that those other notes in there are from sea spray, so not the teal. Uh, but that's okay. And you know what? Ooh. I'm kind of wanting to just... Something's telling me that I just want to, like, speckle it a little bit. Um, I'm still going to pat through some of those areas, but I sort of just wanted a little bit of it not tapped in. I'm not sure what that urge was from, but I'm just sort of going by what I'm feeling, and I'm enjoying the very floral kind of moment that we have going on. Okay, and finally, for at least this round, I've got some Alpine Blue, which is a beautiful and dusty blue. It's not something that goes along with what we have around already. But again, I have this urge to speckle with it a little bit. So I'm gonna tap down when it's up there at the top, but we will see some spread where I'm speckling around too. Like it's not gonna just be super sharp, but it's gonna just add a little bit of some dimension to it. And we will be adding more colors to the other side, so that will kind of tie this in a little bit more once we get there. But now I'm gonna start heating things up. And I know it may seem random with what I'm doing with the blue there, but I'm actually really happy with the chaos and the blend. I mean, that blue, it's funny because the, the color on the swatch, I always know that it is a brighter blue, but this color feels more muted because it's about the proportion. I maybe should have used a little bit less, but it is what it is. So I think that when we flip, we'll bring that blue in more down towards this side as well. Uh, but I'm actually really loving this. So I'm going to let this sit for goodness. I'm going to let it heat up and sit for at least 10 minutes and then we'll come check in. All right, let's give this a flip. We're already having a lot more coverage. We still do have some white, but it doesn't all need to get covered. Uh, the point here is to to sort of have fun and make it feel more complete. There was just too much emptiness before. Uh, and so, yeah, let's have some fun. I put my respirator mask and safety glasses back on and this time started with the Alpine Blue. I knew I needed to pull that blue through a little bit more to feel like it fit a little bit better. And like the other side, I added some bigger patches that I would work through with my fingers a little bit. The urine actually wasn't very hot so I was still able to sort of tap through the color a little bit with my fingers, but I also left some speckles behind because I liked the way that layering worked. I waited about 10 minutes and then moved the yarn again just to see if there was any other little bit of dye that I wanted to add before letting everything heat for 30 minutes to finish setting the color. It has been 30 minutes since I last added dye and now I'm going to turn off the heat and remove the yarn. There's still some white left but we have this beautiful very like random, colorful, garden-y confection colorway. And I'm really, really happy with it. I was happy leaning in to what was there originally and not just covering it up. And again, I could have picked colors that I knew I had used in there originally, but it was fun to do it this way. And so again, you do not have to over dye with a solid. You can over dye in any way you want. But I'm gonna set this aside to cool so that way we can wash it. Let's wash the yarn. I really like how it is. But I do wanna leave a question to all of you. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you like it better now or if you liked it before with a lot more white, a little bit less chaotic. But oh, I love this. I think one issue I have at times, um, because I love the like depth and dimension that we have here, 
Sometimes I try to recreate this with just like four colors or something, and it's not quite enough. And I think that when I'm over dyeing like a swatch thing or something, having a little bit of some other colors gives it a little bit of magic. So maybe I just need to up the total number of colors that I'm using on the stain in the future. Uh, I just added a little bit of some dish soap and now I'm gonna fill up the pan. All right, let's see. All right, that's looking pretty good. I maybe see like a whisper of some color in there, but really that's very, very clear. Uh, not something I would worry about. Um, I am going to rinse out the soap. If I notice more bleeding, I'd let you know, but uh, otherwise, I will put this in my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. And here is the finished yarn. I adore this. I suppose, gosh, we've probably got like nine or ten different colors in here, but there's just this dimension to it. It feels floral. It feels like spring. It's wild. It's loud. It would be really, really great in some kind of simple uh, stitch construction or pattern. It would look amazing at, in garter stitch, but also really great in stockinette. With loud yarn like this, you really want to pick something simple so you can let the color shine because otherwise the color changes might distract the eye. And so if you have a complex stitch pattern, that's not going to be as visible because it'll just be more camouflaged. The original colors that were in here, I think are all pretty visible and present. And so we I don't know if it's fair to say enhanced, but the changes that we made was just to add more color, more pizzazz to this yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and over dyeing, well, there's really no difference between over dyeing and just dyeing yarn. The only difference is that you're not starting with a completely blank canvas, or your canvas has some pigment to it already. And so you can transform any yarn in any way you like. Yes, the simplest way to transform something might be kettle dyeing to over dye it, but I don't think kettle dyeing would have helped the things I felt were missing here. Yes, by making everything overall more saturated, it would have made things feel a little bit more balanced, but I love this result. And so feel free to lean into something. If you feel like something doesn't have enough speckles, add more. Uh, your limitations are, I guess, how far you would like to go as the crafter, the artist, the person who will be using the yarn. Please subscribe, uh, turn on notifications so you never miss any. And I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, so thank you so much for watching.